Okay, so today we're going to take a quick look at the dual theorem and some implications. So this is section 6.7, the dual theorem. And so let's write down our primal here in our dual. So for the primal, we have a max problem. And remember our notation is C transpose X such that a x less than or equal to b and x is greater than or equal to zero and our dual was to minimize b transpose y such that a transpose y is greater than or equal to c and then y is greater than or equal to zero. Good. Now, um, one thing we want to note here before we get started is uh, just a couple of computational things. Um, a, if you take A, B transpose, uh, we want to take the product of the transposes in reverse order. And also part B, is if you have two vectors where x is greater than or equal to c and by this greater than or equal to here I mean let me put this off to the side if I have uh, x1 through xn greater than or equal to c1 through cn right what I'm saying is that x1 is greater than or equal to c1 x2 is greater than or equal to c2, and so on, right? xn greater than or equal to cn. Okay, so if this is true, coming back over to our statement, then is it true that if I take a y, I can take y transpose x, and that would be greater than or equal to y transpose c? So you can see what's going to happen off to the right here. If I dot both sides by y, <clears throat> then on the left side I'm going to get y1 x1 plus plus y and xn. Is that going to be greater than or equal to our uh, y1 c1 plus plus y and cn? Well, remember that x1 is bigger than x1 is bigger than c1 down to xn being greater than cn. So is this always going to be true then that if I multiply by a y, I'm going to get this relationship? Well, the only thing that we have to be careful about is if the y's are ever negative. OK, so therefore, this is true. True, oops, let me go back to white. This is true if your y greater than or equal to zero. Good. OK, uh, so those were just a couple of computational things we wanted to uh, get through there. For now, we're ready for some lemmas here. Keep our notation in mind. Um, the lemma number one, lemma is short for little theorem. So lemma one is weak duality. And it says, if, I'm going to say x star is feasible for the dual, or for the primal, sorry, and y star is feasible for the dual, then what can we say about the uh, z versus the w in our problem? So again, z was c transpose x, and w was b transpose y. Well, remember how the variables were set up, right? w should always be a bigger value than the z, right? Because the w's were designed to be uh, an upper bound for the z's. 
and so it is true in this case as well that that should be greater than or less than or equal to and let's see if we can just prove that just to be sure um, so how would we prove that um, well first off since both are feasible then we have a x star is going to be less than or equal to b and a transpose times y star is greater than or equal to c. Right, so now what happens if I uh, trans if I multiply both sides of this equation by y transpose y transpose b and yeah, on this side I'm going to take x transpose greater than or equal to oops, x transpose c okay and now what we want to look at is this quantity versus this quantity and I wonder if we see that those are the same those are the same and let's show them show why uh, if I just take y transpose ax and I take the transpose what do I get well by the uh, property that we talked about before we go in reverse order right so that's x transpose a transpose y and that is that quantity therefore this quantity over here is a scalar and it's equal to this scalar right so therefore let's put everything in a row um, we can start off with our lowest value here then we have x transpose c which is z and that's going to be less than or equal to uh, y transpose a x that's less than or equal to y transpose b which is our w and there it is so we have proven weak duality if x star is feasible for the primal and y star is feasible for the dual then z value for the primal is less than or equal to the w value for the uh, dual good all right now um let's take a quick look at our second lemma here lemma two that is going to be strong duality and the idea behind uh, lemma 2 is that if x and y are feasible points for the primal and the dual respectively then uh, and we have oops, sorry about that and we have that uh, C transpose X equals um, B transpose Y then uh, we have a solution to the primal then X is a solution to the primal and Y is a solution to the dual good and so that's going to tie the two things together right so how might we actually show that <coughs> well it's really not too hard um, we know for example that by weak duality if x and y are feasible if x and y are feasible right then we have a less than or equal to right and so um, let's pick a y such that this is equal now right and so this y is going to form an upper bound for all of these and we know that at one point there's an equality so is there an x value that is bigger than b transpose y well that's impossible 
and so therefore C transpose X gives us the largest possible value of the primal. Similarly, if I start off here on C transpose X and I say this value right here, C transpose X, is a minimum for B transpose Y over all possible Y's. Right, this is the minimum value for all of these. And in fact, at one point, these are equal. So is there a Y value for which the B transpose Y is smaller than C transpose X? No, that's also impossible. And so therefore, um, these are solutions to the primal and the dual. In case, in other words, X is the minimizer or the maximizer for the primal. Y is the minimizer for the dual. Very good. Okay. Um, I will uh, stop now and we'll take a look at a little bit more theory in the next video.